After some time, SpaceX finally broke the silence related to the launch of the Starship flying test. Unfortunately, this is not good news for space lovers because Starship flights are increasingly postponed, now postponed until the end of November, all because of FAA. So what is the reason and how angry Elon is? Let's continue in the NR Studio episode today. In recent weeks, the engineers at the Starship Launch Facility in South Texas have increased the launch foundation to implement an ambitious plan to intercept the Super Barum aircraft when returning to Earth. The driving force, which is bigger than the Boeing 747, will land vertically using a Raptor machine, slowing down for almost one flight before being captured by two mechanical arms at the launch foundation. This will be the first time SpaceX tested the technique of catching rockets in the middle of the flight. Although Super Heavy is designed to be reused, such as the first nine stages of Falcon, the recovery method in Ainers is slightly different. Instead of landing on an offshore platform that is hundreds of miles, SpaceX aims to bring a booster directly to the launch foundation. If successful, this technique will simplify the process and reduce operating costs. Everything will be fine if SpaceX gets FAA permission to be launched on the scheduled date. But FAA not only spends the date of departure at the end of September or early next month, but also postpone the flight again, at least now until November. It can be understood that such unique operations require additional time to be analyzed from the perspective of licensing, he said. Unfortunately, instead of focusing resources on critical safety analysis and collaborates in good protection efforts to protect the community and the environment, the licensing process is repeatedly marked by problems ranging from trivial things to things that are not reasonable. Elon Musk, who always believed at the time of launch was earlier, became very impatient with the latest news from FAA. He distributed similar tweets, including tweets from SpaceX, which emphasized the importance of Starship for future missions. Space aircraft design that can be fully reused and quickly will improve the ability of humans to access and use space exponentially. To realize its full potential and to do so quickly to meet commitments to national priorities like NASA's Artemis program, Starship must fly. It's true that Starship has to conduct timely test flights during its development. SpaceX needs Starship to demonstrate new technologies so it can quickly build the most perfect version of the world's largest and most powerful spacecraft. The safer we fly, the faster we learn. The faster we learn, the faster we can fully and rapidly reuse rockets, according to SpaceX. Additionally, in the podcast interview, Elon reiterated that Starship is ready to fly. We're waiting for regulatory approval. Sorry for the slow turnaround for Starship Flight 5. It shouldn't be possible to build a giant weapon faster than paper can move from desk to desk. This underscores that the only obstacle to Starship Flight 5 right now is the FAA's launch authorization. What's most important is the ambition to go to Mars, the only way to save humanity from an apocalypse on Earth. Elon also tweeted, we'll never send humans to Mars if this continues. So why should the FAA downplay the importance of such a mission? It's vital to the national and humanitarian interests, simply because of false and misleading reports. Built on the hysteria of internet critics or special interest groups who present poorly constructed science as finished. SpaceX also claims that the FAA's delay is not based on new safety concerns, but on unnecessary environmental reviews. The groundwork is being laid for further FAA investigation into Starship's water-cooled steel flame deflectors. The component has been the subject of false reports, falsely alleging that it pollutes the environment or operates completely outside regulations. These stories ignore basic facts, which are either ignored or intentionally misrepresented. SpaceX has never used the deflector without a permit. The company operated in good faith under a general multi-industry permit, including flood discharge activities under the oversight of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. SpaceX worked with the TCEQ to implement a variety of mitigation measures prior to use, including the installation of containment tanks, the construction and protection of barriers, the sealing of discharge points during operations, and the use of non-contact non-industrial portable water. Several permits were granted and went into effect in July of last year. TCEQ officials were present and in person at the first test of the water spray system, having the opportunity to observe the activity around launch time. The water-cooled steel housing emits no pollutants into the surrounding environment. Again, use potable water. 
Water discharges from the system were taken after each use, which consistently showed negligible traces of pollutants, with all levels below the limits allowed by the state discharge permit. The TCEQ, FAA, Fish and Wildlife all looked at the use of this system before initial implementation, enduring testing and release, and determined that no, it does not harm the environment. Of course, there is the question of the claim that SpaceX should pay the fine to the CEQ and not the EPA. It was clarified that the fine was entirely related to administrative noncompliance. What about the rumor that SpaceX's water is harming the environment? That is simply not true. The following two reasons have prompted the FAA way to take a closer look at the changes to Starship that have been in place for some time making one wonder what the FAA way has done in the last three months to make this change. Now, the reason, the two main reasons for the delay, according to the company, are the heat of the middle stage and the landing profile for catching the super heavy starship at the launch tower. These issues prompted the FAA to request an additional 60-day consultation with the National Marine Fisheries Service regarding the warm phase with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service regarding the landing profile. Regarding the ring, SpaceX said that the only proposed change for Starship's fifth flight is a minor change to the landing stage location, which does not increase the likelihood of impacting marina life. This issue alone, which has been thoroughly analyzed, could certainly delay the launch without addressing any credible environmental impacts, SpaceX said. As the super heavy Starship returns to the launch tower, it will inevitably create a sonic boom. And since a slightly larger area can experience a sonic boom, the FAA has now requested additional consultation. SpaceX first released an assessment in July explaining that Starship's sonic boom posed no risk when the FAA publicly reviewed the company's plans to increase the frequency of Starship launches in Texas. In its statement, SpaceX noted that sonic booms occur during re-entry of NASA spacecraft and are also an integral part of Falcon 9 landings, adding that the blast produced by the Super Heavy boosters would be more powerful than those produced by the Falcon landings. However, SpaceX believes that they pose no risk of injury to bystanders, as the strongest impacts would be localized to the area around the Starbase launch site. It all stems from the FAA's delay in processing permits. Last year, company officials asked the FAA to double its permitting staff to handle commercial takeoff and return requests. Congress approved a $42 million increase in funding for the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation for fiscal year 2024. With SpaceX rapidly launching rockets and other companies conducting suborbital human spaceflights, the FAA has had to significantly expand its operations. But the hard truth is that not all companies are as closely monitored by the FAA as SpaceX. Take Boeing. Starliner has not received much attention despite failing to return astronauts Butch Wilmore and SUNY Williams to Earth. Starliner still received its certification without much difficulty. This is because the company's business structure mirrors the bureaucratic nature of government, as Boeing generates significant revenue from government contracts. Elon commented, I think Boeing is a company that does a lot of business with the government, so it has the same resistance to government. So basically, I'm one step away from the government, maybe two steps away, they are not far behind the government in terms of permanent effectiveness because they get the majority of their revenue from the government. It is important to comment on the recent management changes at Boeing, led by a new CEO. I think at least so far because they have a new CEO who actually showed up at the factory, and the previous CEO I think had an accounting degree and had never worked in a factory and didn't know how to fly a plane. I assume you are the boss of a company that flies planes and spacecraft into orbit. It can't be a mystery how it works. Marketing knowledge for CEOs of consumer products like soft drinks is a good thing, Musk says. But CEOs of aerospace and space companies need to understand how those vehicles work. His Starship is the first rocket design where success is one possible outcome with full reusability. So if you had to say on a particular project, it's a pie chart on the right, it has a circle, and this is success in that circle. It's successful in all possible outcomes. His projects where success is not in possible outcomes, but with Starship, success is not just an outcome, it's been tested on every launch the manager believes. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.